Welcome to Drum and Drummer, a podcast focused on drums, drumming and drummers. I'm George Pickering and that's Ben Winty and we are both professional drummers in this business we call music. So stick around and join us as we pass the time whilst trying to stay in time. You're just sending this to fucking anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're preying on the weak and the vulnerable. Yeah. And it's not fair. Drum and drummer, here we are, Thursday morning. Thursday morning, <laughs> episode 77. It is indeed, it is indeed. We're doing this one a little bit early because you're in Greece or have yep. just been to Greece. So Currently, yeah, back from Greece. Back from Greece now, but we thought we'd get this one done before you went away. Yeah, that's kind. So I hope you've had a good time. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> God, be awful if something yeah. tragic's happened. Don't worry, I'll still put the episode. Yeah, (laughs) this comes out. It's like, oh, you had a good time in Greece. Yeah, everyone's he's dead. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. But what would be the way you'd want to go? What in Greece or in general? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I get worried because I tell you what, I get worried about dying an embarrassing death. Yes. So, for example, if I went to war, which I (laughs) never would, (laughs) I never would. Um, I mean, that spider's still bogging me out. Just imagine what a machine gun would do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But if you died at war, this isn't meant to be insensitive. If you died at war and it's because someone shot a bullet through your brain, mm. hero. Yeah. But you cut yourself on the ladder, it gets infected. Yeah. And you die. A ladder at war or like doing gardening? Yeah, a ladder at war, like yeah. climbing out the trenches. Oh, cut yourself. Yeah. Uh, got infected. Yeah. And you died from, you know, we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You slipped on something and hit your head. Yeah. Like, it's different, isn't it? It's a different it is. death. It <laughs> it's a different sort is. of death. And you died on in Greece because you got hit by a car. Mm. But Tragedy. There be, well, there could be different elements to that. If I was saving you know, a child, and I push the child out of the way, hero. Yeah. But, yeah. on the flip side, if I was looking at my phone... And your pants fell down and you tripped over crossing yeah. the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Different you know. sort of... Uh, Have you ever thought about what picture you'd want used? Oh, that's a good question. Would I don't you know. want... Because how I, do they do that? Do they just... Because they, they some of the ones they put up, you think, yeah. is there no better? Like, it's it's... <laughs> It's like they've taken a photo of a screen. Do you know yeah, what I mean? It's so yeah. pixelated. Yeah. It's like, like from, it's like they've taken their MySpace profile picture from two thousand and four. <laughs> it's like this current cameras we've got these days. Yeah. You know, it's got to be a good picture. I think I'd want one from our drum and drummer photo shoot. Yeah. And because uh, you, you could be in it as well, and they yeah. just. Have a yeah. arrow or like blur you out. And a the, the, bit or the headline be the show must go on. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. What would yeah. you do? Hypothetically, I die. Mm-hmm. Get another guest. No, not another guest. Who? Right. Okay. Who would? Who would you have as a host instead? As a co-host. Mm. Um, I think Jack Jack Geary could be a laugh. Jack Geary. He was, could he was be a good, a laugh, he was a good lad, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'd have a. Maybe I'd do like kind of the. Uh, like the one show, just have revolving. Yeah. Get Jermaine Genus on. He does everything. <laughs> doesn't he? Yeah. Get, get him, him on. He'd be yeah. up for it. I think Jack Gear would be a good. He, he, we, you know, we had a long chat after the episode and seemed on the same wavelength. Yeah. I think. I think there's um there's a couple of bits in there actually that I might put up as a, like a YouTube exclusive. Well, yeah, we did say that and I forgot to ask. Did you keep yeah. the rest? Yeah, Is yeah. It, I keep, I, got, yeah, it's all, still got yeah, all the go raw on. audio. Yeah. I so think that's just... Do you know what would be good? Even if just we, like five minutes we talked about. There was definitely something we talked about that was quite... Not yeah. deep, but just good yeah. content. Well, you know when they do... We haven't got a Patreon pay, page. No. Um, not nearly. Not nearly successful. <sighs> for that. Um, but people that do that, that's what they do in it. It's like, if you want to listen to the... We talked after the show. If you mm, want to listen to that. Exclusive shit and ad yeah, free exactly. and, yeah. and all that. All that bollocks. Because I'll be honest, listeners, that's sometimes where we get the gold, is when we go, right, see you later, and then they stay online, and then, then they tell us something Some great. people can't wait to get off the call. <laughs> they click that button, leave button. Yeah, the speed before. Of it, <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thanks, bye. <laughs> oh, they're gone. Okay. 
No. Yeah. It's all good. Have it is good. all good. Right, what are we talking about today? Um, well, I, I had a geek. Yeah. Last week. So this isn't the uh this is actually I'm gonna go behind the curtain here. This is still been this has been recorded before my coronation party gig. Yeah. So my last gig was uh with Victoriana. Mm-hmm. Um it was a gig with a sound limiter. Yep. And this would be the ultimate gig to try out my dream kit that I've talked yes. about quite a lot, you know. But anyway, I played this venue before, and so I know the sound is not that bad. Mm. Okay, so I took my full, you know, acoustic kit. The gig was easy. It was like it was really nice. It was just absolute textbook, you know. And a nice. It was twenty minutes from home. Yeah. And b my car worked. <laughs> so that's an not absolute, always a given. <laughs> no, not I. a given this, this season. So that was an absolute win. So it yeah. looks like I'll be getting all of my fee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Didn't break right. a plant pot like Elliot. So yeah. no, still got four tires. Yeah, but the sound is interesting there because it's very bass sensitive. Mm. So low end sends that thing into the red. If people don't know what sound limiters are, contraptions installed in lots of wedding venues and other places. If the sound is too loud for too long, it basically cuts the power cuts the electricity and you have to hit a reset button so there's this little thing on the wall that has this kind of led light so you can sort of see it as you're playing and some sound limiters and this is they're just so inconsistent and they'll be set to like a volume level like db like 95 decibels this one was set to right Mm. but this one is very bass sensitive so you just do like the bass guitar not very loud that thing is pumping into the red yeah. But I could hit my snare drum as hard as I liked and it barely touched the green. <laughs> so it's that thing of like, well, volume is irrelevant here. Yeah. Because I could, I was like, even, you know, you got to see, well, what's this sound limit sensitive to? Like, I could absolutely twat a cymbal or re- hit the snare really hard. Mm. Nothing. Mm. Didn't even, you know, it registered just like a couple of greens. Yeah kick drum a bit more yeah. floor tom a bit more but bass guitar so as soon as neil just started you know we put a mic in the kick drum just boosted a bit of low end wow it was in the red yeah so we had to sort of scale back low end frequencies now there might be a reason because low end you know low frequencies they they're the ones that travel through surfaces so through floors and walls so that's why outside a nightclub all you can hear is the bass yeah it's something to do with the size of the wavelength of as you go lower down the frequency scale, the wavelengths get bigger, and it's something to do with that. I don't know. I should know more as a sound engineer, <laughs> but I don't. Um, so they might actually have it set to purposefully keep the low end minimal because that's what's going to travel to any neighbouring properties. Mm. But that snare is definitely louder than ninety five dB. Yeah. When I hit it full, full. So actually, I was able to play pretty full. Yeah, yeah. Pretty full on. Didn't affect you, no. Not as much, no. no. You know, I, I, I could, I had to maybe just be a little, little easier on the kick. Mm. But we made sure that, you know, so what, in essence, so actually the sound out front didn't have much low end, which just isn't good. It just doesn't make a nice, well-rounded sort of sound for the band. But that mean it's not quiet. Yeah. So I mean, it's still loud. Yeah. So it's like, well, is that sound limit just ineffective, or actually have they got it right in terms of we just need to keep the line? But I've Maybe, done some. Yeah, yeah. Where you just tickle the snare drum; it's in the red. Yeah. And you can whack the kick drum as loud as you want, and nothing. Yeah. And that's the thing; it's these inconsistencies, and the trouble, uh, you know, with live music is so spiky, whereas like compressed music that you put through like the iPad and stuff is is so compressed and limited. There's no spikes. And these sound limits, they just can't handle the nature of live music. But in this instance, it was all right. But yeah. it was just interesting how yeah. I could hit that. It's fucking loud. I could hit yeah. the cymbals and snares as loud as I wanted. Yeah. Um, and it didn't make, a, didn't make a difference. Yeah. yeah. The bass guitar had to be quite low. But then as well, it they work on like different frequencies. So the, depending on the key of the song, mm. some songs... Like let's just say it's an F. Yeah. Absolutely pummeling it in the red. Play the s- exact same volume but in the key of A, nothing. 
So it's just, it's, it's you know. Yeah. So in the end, actually, it wasn't too bad, and it was fine. Well, it was fine. Going on from what you mentioned about the kit, and you should have had uh, that kit that's low volume skins and symbols. We've had a bit of correspondence. Oh, feed me. I know from Nathan Woods. Hello, so, Nathan. Hello, Nathan. Thanks for listening. First of all, yeah. he got in touch. He got in touch with a video um, because we spoke about you know having low volume symbols and skins and 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 with triggers and with triggers yeah. and could you create a kit that's you know you can essentially turn up and down the volume of the kit, which is something like people at uh, you know wedding planners can sometimes essentially say like, oh, could you turn your kit down or say like, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this, you sort of could. So anyway, um, there was a video by Minor Symbols, and they showed that they had some low-volume symbols with low-volume skins, and there's just a guy playing it. So Nathan Wood got in touch, sent me that video, or sent the account that video, said they're all at it. And, you know, I replied... So, so these are Remo. Remo have got in the game as well Re- now. Yes, they? Remo, yeah. quiet skins, Minor, quiet symbols... And I just said, we thought we were onto something. It turns out everyone's doing it. You know, we thought it was our idea, but uh, new. Um, or maybe they listened to the pod and it all quickly did it. Who knows? But um, basically, he said he's given it some thought after listening to us talk about it, which is very nice. Um, so he lives in a uni house, can't actually drum at home. So this might be a solution. And I said, well, keep us in the loop because mm. it'd be great to see someone actually you know yeah in that situation of using quiet skins and symbols in a house yeah how how loud is it how well it works so um, yeah so nathan if you're listening to this we uh thanks for your correspondence and yeah do keep us uh keep us posted on that because yeah it'd be it'd be fascinating if this is a way it sort of goes because you know everyone's there's more people in the world everyone's having to live closer and houses you know, are being made smaller yep there's all these different things. Um, Not like current existing ones. I no. mean, like, <laughs> they build new ones. You well, know. I might have come around to make your house smaller. Is that all right? <laughs> Just need to put up some bricks. But, you know, that might be a thing in 10 years' time. Maybe it'll be the end of electric drum kits in a way. I don't know. Could it almost... Not the end, but could it face Will they... Out? Will... Well, I've just thought now. Will... will uh, you know, because the the way I see the kit, and I think you actually sent me a video of someone had set up silent skins and yeah. symbols with symbol triggers and skin, you know, triggers. And w- will will a kit manufacturer will they will you be able to buy a drum kit that is pre, you know, the shells, mm. and it's comes with silent skins, it comes with silent symbols with with triggers built in. Yeah. Yeah. So it really becomes, you don't have to get the compo- separate components yourself and put it together. Yeah. The, the triggers are built in yeah. somewhere on, on the inside of the, the, the drum or something. And you can sort of buy it as a, as mm. a package mm. and it comes with a, a brain, you know, a drum module. Yeah. And you can then just literally plug it into a PA. Yeah. It's just there, Bosh. Yeah. Because as we know, an electric drum kit doesn't feel like you're playing a real drum kit in in terms of you know the pads and everything don't feel like cymbals or drums but also in terms of the size i mean it's just mm. it's it's weird to set up an electric kit like you'd set up your own kit and even then it's it doesn't feel quite right even if you get the positioning correct so yeah i think it could be uh mm. the way it all goes uh speaking of drums <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seen as it's what the podcast is about. I've been eager to tell you something about sticks that I learned recently. If you're ready to go on to that. Uh, yeah, I just, just yeah, go on. one last thing on this gig. I actually use a different snare drum. Oh, okay. Let's, yeah, on go this on. Gig. So I, I, you know, my personal snare drum that I've been using for a number of years now is the Mapex Cherry Bomb. Mm, big time. Very cracky. Yeah. High pitched. Not a lot of snareiness. <laughs> in it yeah you know not a lot of sizzle but got this natal brass hand hammered snare at the studio which um i've sort of gained from uh jacko from Barry tomorrow mm. i've sort of got it on permanent loan mm. and i just been at the moment that's that's the go-to for recording nice it's such a good all-round snare 
Um, and I was like, do you know what? I'm going to, I think I'm going to start gigging with this one this yeah. year. And f- for me, and and part of the reason I thought is because I got a sound limiter, like this, this snare's a bit lower pitch, it's a bit rounder, mm. it's a bit warm, but it's still got the metallic y, mm. a bit of metallic y sharpness and a bit, and, and a bit, a lot more snare sizzle. But I also thought, I think just in general, it's a bit quieter. Mm. The, the cherry bomb is so piercing. Yeah. So I was like, maybe that'll help. And I just thought in the nature of Victoriana with the like the skiffle shuffle yeah, bullshit, yeah. <laughs> having that snarier sound, it's just a bit better and it's a yeah. bit more it feels like a bit softer to play. Yeah. Like you got you've got a bit it's a bit more um you got a bit more control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On it. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. Nice. So I'm gonna I think I'm gonna which makes me really want to get my own brass snare or or metal snare. Yeah. I've never really had a metal snare. And, you know, I've got no money, but because I keep buying fucking tires, um, <laughs> is is uh, I, I think I mentioned a few weeks ago. But looking at aluminium, there was a loads of different. I saw a video with loads of different aluminium snare drums, and mm. maybe. But I'm going to use this Natal one, I think, from now on. Brilliant for, for gigging this season. Nice mixing it up, mixing yeah, it up. It's the up. only thing I can do to mix it up. Cause yeah, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, sorry. No. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, sticks, right. I've been eager to tell you this. Um, so I had a lesson with Pat Garvey, as I do every two weeks. And I started the lesson by telling him, you know, I, I switched to 7A sticks rather than 5A sticks. And I said it was a bit of a game changer for me. And I think it was mixed with the fact that, speaking of snares, I tuned my snare up high. And it just felt like it was so nice to play. Um, the combo of lighter sticks and a a snare which had more response so i was talking to him about 7a vic firth sticks um which happened to be the stick he uses as well and and laurie miller and i was talking to him about it and i can't remember how he sort of got onto it but he said oh well it depends what weight a 7a you're using and i was like sorry what and he was like <laughs> yeah he's like the weight and I was like, what do you mean the weight? He was like, well, 7A's come in light, medium, or heavy. And I was like, mm. what? And he was like, yeah. So he was like, are you ready? He basically said, like, are you ready to go down this rabbit hole? Because I'll explain it to you. And I was like, yes, please. <laughs> For some reason, yeah. I thought he was going to go, so are you ready to party? Because yeah. <laughs> now we're talking six. Now we're talking <laughs> six, boy. Um, basically said, if you get a... Uh, a pack of 12 sticks from Vic Firth usually it'll be four of them will be lightweight four of them will be medium weight and four of them will be heavyweight and I was like I still don't what do you mean but they're all still 7A's he's like yeah they're all still 7A's but they're different weights within the 7A bracket and okay yeah and it's weird because if you google it if you google like different stick weights it just immediately goes to like 5A, 7A, 5B. But within the sizes, you get medium, light, and heavy. And I showed, I, I gave him my pair of sticks. He was like, yeah, they're lightweight. And he went, feel my 7As, and they were medium weight. And you can feel like the slightest difference. And he said like there's ways you can find out as well. Like if you tap them, you can hear like the pitch. At that point, I was like, you're just making stuff up now because he was like tapping into his <laughs> ear. He's like, no, 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 it's true. But Vic Firth, apparently, like all drum manufacturers do this. They'll have weights within the sizes. And Vic Firth, apparently, are really good at doing this. They can really get, like, you know, within a pack of 12, it will be four light, four medium, four heavy. But apparently, uh, not to name and shame them, but, like, um, Vata aren't perhaps as good. So you could get a block of sticks from them and you weigh them differently and they're all sort of all over the place in a way so it's like yeah. if you want to really be you know he sort of said like if you're just well, playing, you hear the, the phrase is i think matched pairs yes exactly mm. and if you're wanting if you just want to play loud rock music it doesn't really matter but um but if you're really trying to get the exact tone and you've pitched the kit perfectly but then you're playing sticks and ones are heavy and ones are light even if they're both 7a it's gonna sound off you know if you're playing on the same um part of the kit but it just blew my mind, you know? And uh, I think it's something like, yeah, 7A is like 47 grams or something, and but that's a light one. And then if you go up, it's 49. I can't remember exact. And I said, 
I said, well, how do you know when you go to a drum shop if you're getting? Because yeah. he said, he said you're, he said you've been used to playing seven A lightweight just by chance. I just picked up a lightweight pair of sticks from a store, and he was like, when you next go to a drum shop, like try and find a similar brand. And I actually, I said it to the guy. Gak, I went into Gak the other day and was like, do you know about stick weights? He was like, oh yeah. Like almost like <laughs> it's sort of like this because I don't feel like everyone knows it. I definitely didn't know it. And yeah, we sort of got the seven A's out in Gak and then we kind of went through and found a light pair of seven A's as opposed to like a heavy pair. Yeah. But it just sort of blew my mind. But if you look it up, you have to, you have to go on like someone's asked about like a question like hey I've, I've bought this pair of sticks and they feel different to my usual 5a's and someone will be like they might be weighted a heavier weight than you're used to within that size so they're not actually marked there's like the no you there's, can't no so that's the thing that's because that's what i asked pat i said well does it show you because he he was using medium 7a's and i was using light as i found out and i was like but how do you know and he was like you just have to kind of know how they feel how a light yeah. pair feels or or you know take a pair of scales yeah yeah exactly i said that and i did say you know but he said he got really into it you know into like stick sizes and weights and you can really go down a sort of like yeah i mean you know when ben so is that but did, i don't know if you asked him this or if you know but is that in essence a just a mistake in the manufacturing process like or is it intentional i think it is intentional um but if it's intentional why are they not why are they not all the same y yeah or being like 7a light 7a yeah, medium like I don't so know. you so you know what you're buying rather than yeah taking a fucking pair of scales <laughs> down with you or just having a yeah <coughs> go by feel yeah i don't know because i what I, what i'd um i don't have any new sticks but if i get some like a couple of pairs of 5a's mm. i'll weigh them i've got a little kitchen yeah, yeah, scale yeah, yeah. be interesting to weigh them even even just just to see if there's a difference between the pair, you know, yeah. within the pairs or if there's a different... I'll just pick two. I'll, like, buy them as normal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then just see what they weigh. Yeah. At home. Well, that's another thing is that I said to him, I was like, so in your stick bag, is it all the set? And I knew he'd say yes, but it was like, he said, in this stick bag, I just have medium 7As and in this other one, I'll have light 7As. And I was thinking about me. It's so chaotic, my stick bag. You know, it's just like random sticks and the weight whisper wrappers yeah. and <laughs> pasties <Yeah>. and <laughs> exactly the weights could be all over the place but it really made me think and he was like if you when you get into it you can really like you know go down a rabbit hole of like you buy a block and weigh them all individually and then be like okay mm. these go with these these go with these right but maybe that's why it isn't on the stick because maybe you have to actually if but say you're a new drummer or you play loud rock music and it doesn't matter you might not know and it might not be a thing but i think maybe it's when you get to a point where you're like you really say you're doing a performance and it's the you know every tone is important that's when you'd start to you know really notice it but yeah it was just it was just fascinating i was like fuck you know it's another thing to you know i was like right cool got new sticks and it's like yeah well what weight i'm like what's like you know <laughs> um but it's interesting because I, I did ask uh, you know, I was like, if you got like a heavy 7A, could it perhaps weigh more than like a light 5A? And he's like, yeah, potentially, you know, and it's like, that's when it just goes into, you know, you could play with a 7A and it would be heavier than a 5A and that seems so bizarre. But mm. but it's, um, yeah, it's a conversation that could go on forever with stick weights because it's, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's fascinating. It kind of is fascinating when you start to get into like real nerdy drum stuff like that. Yeah, um, I I can't help but feel, and I I am probably wrong, that it's not intentional. Yeah, maybe not. Like it's not intentional. They don't make them to be three different sort of weights. But a a, a top drummer like you should when you buy sticks weigh them. Mm and match the weights yourself. Match them yourself. Well, that's that's the thing. Because, because how do you... Because the sticks are made to all be the same size mm. and all made out of the same wood. Mm. So it's probably just minor inconsistencies yeah. of wood density or the manufacturing process that actually, yeah, you should just... You will just have ones that are just that inconsistent in weight. Yeah. They'll be the same size and they'll be the same 
diameter mm. and circumference. <laughs> but actually, what you should do is, if you buy a, a block, you should weigh them all. Yeah. And and group them. Yeah. And go. These these are the lighter ones. These ones are the medium, and these are the these yeah. are heavier. And mm. so you're then playing with a, 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 a you match your pair yourself. Yeah. And then and you'll just that will give you. Well, that's yeah, exactly the, the, what he was saying. As I mentioned, he said, and with Vata, apparently, it would be like he'd get a few, out of a block of twelve, say, he'd get like three pairs that were matched in weight, and then the rest were just all off and he'd have to mm. throw him away because it wasn't yeah it, so know? maybe maybe Vic Firth in that instance I think are, Vic Firth are better at it you know uh, are they just more consistent with yeah. their manufacturing yeah so it leads to less variation yeah or are they indeed not necessarily going his four light four medium four heavy but their their averages are better yeah so a bit of that they they can group some together and go and weigh it weigh it mm. and go if we're looking for an average weight of yeah. this or yeah is it just consistent more well that's more it if you think about it in the factory as well obviously it's much easier to just go here's the sticks and then just tape them up and that's it you know if they've got to weigh them in the factory that's a whole whole lot more time you know um, yeah. to weigh it before. but maybe it's just more consistent that enables you to be able to group them better yourself yeah 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 but that's very interesting to actually, yeah, if you buy a block or even just a pair, like a few pairs, go yeah. and weigh them and match them yourself. That's the thing, because I got so used to using that 7A pair, but yeah, I could go in and buy another pair of 7A and it be the same, it, like everything's the same on the stick, but it's a completely different stick. Mm. Um, so I notice if I, because I'm rim shotting, baby, mm. like that left hand will get chipped. Yeah. The left hand stick will get chipped more. And then you you then start to notice a little weight difference between yeah, the two yeah, sticks, yeah. and then so you find like sometimes then if you switch them around you're like oh that's weird because mm, mm, totally. <laughs> one's slightly heavier yeah you know and then maybe I have felt like I'm just thinking like when I bought a new pair of sticks like you know Vic Ver five A's and I'll go fresh with a new pair and sometimes maybe I think like oh these feel really heavy mm. or these feel quite light well we spoke about it maybe once. that's it but yeah ages. I'll buy some sticks because I need some yeah. And I'll weigh them and I'll see just... Yeah, do it, what, yeah. What, what buying a couple of... I'm not going to buy a block, but no. if I buy like a couple of pairs yeah. and just go pair A, this is what came, mm. these are their weights. Yeah. Pair B, these are their weights. Is it better I split them up? Yeah. Or are they okay, you know? Yeah. Mm, interesting. Staying on a sticks, stick world, there's a bit of an interesting one because, <laughs> <laughs> like, I got a message on Instagram to my personal Instagram at Winto mm -hmm. from a brand called Collision Drumsticks. The first bit, hi Ben, would love to connect. Smiley face emoji, then the 100 emoji. Have you tried our drumsticks before? Let's analyze that. <laughs> Let's analyze that. The okay. 100 emoji already. Yeah. Sounds bit like ML, a scam. MLM. Yeah. First off, they have used my name. Yeah. So, you know, it is in my profile. Mm. But that goes to show a little bit of effort, <laughs> you know? It's like when people contact me at the studio about jobs and that. It's not hard to find out my name. No. Write my name. Oh, you've done a bit of homework. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> um, so I replied. Sure, let's connect. Yeah. What? What's up? Yeah. What, you know, because I'm thinking, it's spam, isn't it? Not mm. spam, but it's just someone has just... Because you look at their profile and it's like, they've got 100, nearly 150,000 followers. So it's like, have they just been following spamming yeah. everyone? But they're a brand of drumsticks and they're trying to yeah. break, it, break into the market. Fair, absolutely fair. So in my head, they've got someone on Instagram who just reach out to anyone who's tagged anything to do with drums, mm -hmm. you know. So I said, hey, guys, sure, let's connect. What's up? They said, oh, no worries. I didn't even answer the question <laughs> about have you tried our drumsticks before? I think they expect everyone to go no. Yeah. So is this like an <laughs> auto reply, like yeah. template yeah. sales brochure? Oh, no worries. Never said I didn't use them. <laughs> so we would love to invite you to try our brand. Let us know and we can help get you set up with a discounted order. What size do you play? I put, I'm a 5A boy through and through. <laughs> you know? That's awesome. 
That's it. It's the most gen- <laughs> generic stick out there, isn't it? Um, we definitely pride ourselves on our product durability. Have you seen our durability test? There's a YouTube link. What's your name and email? Can we add you to our email list? We'll send you a discount code immediately. You already know my name. Mm. You've used it before. <laughs> it's on my profile. You know. You've wrote it. Yeah, you you and you wrote it. And I said, I thought I'm gonna have a little bit of fun, not fun, but just yeah. I'm a, I, I might I might be up for trying them, George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might be up for trying them. I'm trying just just reading it, you know. And you're like, a couple of emojis, not a fan. Mm. But it's like, so I replied, maybe. How come you reached out to me? Mm. And I did that because if they replied and said, we know we've seen you do a drum podcast. Yeah. And this is not not me expecting anything for free, but if they oh we've seen you do a drum podcast or we've seen you post some videos of you drumming or we know you're a drum, then like okay yeah, but you're obviously just sending this message to every fucking person, so yeah. it's like so I said yeah maybe how come you reached out to me to see if they if they go oh we've seen you do a drum podcast I'm probably going to place an order mm. to try them out mm. or oh we've seen your videos blah blah blah. Whatever. I said now on the 21st of April, nothing. <laughs> they've not replied. No. Have they seen it? Seen the message? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been seen, but they've not replied. And, like, I don't know. Just thought, okay, well, if, if you, and from my experience with running a business, and it, yeah, it's slightly different, but, like, if you just spam everyone, it doesn't work. Mm it doesn't work you have to be targeted like and have a bit of nuance yeah or like care about your communication mm. you know and um all they got to do is like oh we like we thought you we thought some of your drum videos were cool yeah, or yeah, yeah. oh we saw you do a drum podcast and in that and in that case it's like i'd you know wouldn't look for like a free pair to like review them or anything mm. but it'd be like i'll buy some and then i can talk about them on here yeah, with yeah. honesty yeah Rather than because I paid for the product, mm. you know. But now it's like, now I'm going to talk about you <laughs> badly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? We're calling you and out. Not that we have any power in the drumming world no. or anything. Far from it. But, you know, you type drum pass podcast into Google. We are now number six. Yeah, we're going up. In the list. Yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you, all you had to fucking do was just look at my profile and you'd seen like there's loads of posts about a fucking drum yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. And maybe we could. Yeah, I'd buy some and try them out. Yeah. And I could maybe. Well, let's let's give think back a... to uh, Mr. Lauden who messaged us and said, "Hey, I've written a book. Can I send it to you?" And he did. And then we had him on the show, and I read his book, and we spoke about his book, Forbidden Beat. And you know, and now we we stay in touch loosely. You know, us yeah. and him. And uh, but that was yeah, he sort of got in touch in a nice way. You know. But, um, yeah, yeah, and I just felt like, yeah, this is just a uh, some you know, I don't know, an intern or someone just like spamming yeah. every fucking inbox, just trying to, yeah, that it's valid, you know, they're trying to get people to buy their product, yeah. But like, I, if you if you do it that way, really impersonally, yeah, to just loads of people, I don't think it's as effective, no, as targeting someone and going, we've seen this video, or we like you're playing, mm. or they've got some some kind of foot in the industry mm. in some way. Obviously, it's different when you get to, like, you know, big-level players mm. and endorsements with brands and things like that. But, like, and I'm sure, but if, you, if you're playing for The Darkness yeah. or someone yeah. or Maisie Peters or yeah. Ruben or all these, you know, and someone gets in touch, like, hey, blah, blah, and they don't even know what fucking band you're yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah. How are you ever going to take them seriously? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I just... um. And it's that thing, it's like, well, I'm going to talk about you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but if they message and say, it, they had an opportunity there in my head to just, okay, well, let's, why are you messaging me? Mm. You know, obviously, and I think, obviously they've gone, it's not worth it. Yeah. So we'll just move on to someone else. Well, I think that's the sad bit though, is that it's probably, it will be young drummers who get that message and go, oh, cool. I've been contacted. Because I remember when I was younger and... A mate of mine said, "Oh, my mate plays in this band, and he's he's got an he's got a cymbal endorsement." And I was like, "Really, you know?" 
and it was some company it wasn't a big company but the endorsement deal was like you can be an endorsee but you have to spend half the price of the symbols i was like well, that's not an endorsement yeah, yeah. but it's like you just get it cheaper you just get it cheaper yeah. but it's like but the amount of young drummers who would have got a message saying like you know oh we really like your stuff do you want to do and they'll go oh my god i've got a symbol endorsement and it's like i don't know it's a bit of that almost it's it's you know taking the i don't know not taking the piss but taking yeah advantage. it's not exploiting but it's just it's um it's kind of a it's, it's disingenuous isn't it yeah. it's not real it's yeah. not there's no value to it there's no substance yeah well it's so, like when we try and get guests you know we'd never ever write to a drummer and be like hi we have a pod can you be on it thanks bye you know every message is always like you know when i message yeah, we, jay we, sakura you know, i was like i'm a massive fan of yours <laughs> you know I'll yeah like honest. we fucking know who they play for yeah. what they do yeah exactly and, and and why we'd like them on the pod yeah. and a, a personal fucking message yeah, you know exactly and not just generic yeah stuff and um so collision drumsticks <laughs> let's talk yeah <laughs> let's talk I'll, I'll tag you in all this shit yeah let's see uh what you think but you've let me down but i'll give you a second chance yep I'll give you a second chance. Get back on my Instagram <laughs> and let's talk. Yeah. And maybe... Because may you might have created the best stick ever, you know? You might have done. You might, might have, have done. done. And but you've you, got you the know, worst the people, marketing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the people that have created the sticks might be brilliant. And then they've yeah. got a marketing And I think, I think there's something, you know, they're hustling, obviously. You know, I don't know how... It's, it's kind of that thing of... As a kind of a rule, like, don't... You shouldn't really buy something if the if the seller's approaching you. Yeah, like if you're good, people will come to you. Yeah, and like the blacksmiths, like most people come. You know, mm. we don't advertise, mm. so and we don't have to send messages like that out. Mm. There might be a band who've like rehearsed here, and I might have a chat with them and say, "Oh, you know, oh, I enjoyed your oh, from what I can hear through the walls. Like I really liked it. If you're looking at mm. recording, you know, but don't really just cold call no. bands or at least without doing some research yeah. and." and um doesn't happen and it's like yeah if your sticks are good why aren't more people talking about it yeah. <laughs> but it's not to say they're not good they no. could be really good they could be absolutely fine but just i don't know yeah yeah I know what you maybe mean. be a bit more personal well yeah and more. even if yeah because sometimes you yeah. don't do the whole social i get fucking spammy oh you'd be, you'd be good to model jewelry no i wouldn't <laughs> this is you're just sending this to fucking anybody yeah, yeah, yeah and you're preying on the weak and the vulnerable yeah and it's not fair yeah you know sometimes but if, if they'd have just gone this guy's a drummer and he does a drum podcast yeah he'd be good to get in touch about our sticks yeah but you're answering with replies to questions i haven't asked yeah. you're <laughs> your you're, you're messaging is just like someone sat there just fucking autopilot yeah yeah and it's not a good look yeah it's not a good look it's not representing your brand well <laughs> if you want it to be represented well yeah well you've called them out i've called them out and let's chat mm. let's connect mm. as you said Right, anything else to talk about? Uh, just life's creaking, isn't it? Yeah. It's all right. creaking. So before we do an episode, we talk about what we're mm. going to discuss. And you said this, and I was like, well, I'll save that for the <laughs> show to see what he's on about. What's this? So, you know, cost of living. Yeah. Makes, make it, just making things harder for everyone. Yeah. And and you get this, and not just because of cost of living, but just you get you get yourself set up in a place you're content with you know yeah. you still got to manage things you still got things that just need maintenance or just, and, and i'm talking mentally physically mm. equipment things in your house mm. or whatever and my mum was said bad things come along in threes mm -hmm. so your washing machine will break yeah. and but then something else will happen then something else will happen then nothing will happen for a while mm. it just seemed to come along at once mm. and i chatted to a few people about this and it's like for example, I've had a couple of incidents with tyres. Mm. Nearly got stuck in the mud. Finding musicians has been a bit harder. Gigs are coming in late notice. It's been a bit trickier to sort lineups up. Yeah. You know, and it's like at home, the my Juliet balcony door, like the, the, the kind of windowsill, it's just swollen a bit. <laughs> Some fucking delivery driver walked oil all up the fucking flight of stairs. Uh, and it's like, I got an angry email being like, oh, you've traipsed oil in the flat. You need to pay for it to be repaired. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Let me stop you there, yeah. Andrew. Yeah. Wasn't fucking me, was it? It was a fucking delivery driver. I didn't notice so the next day. Well, we're calling yes, people they out. came to our flat. Yeah. <laughs> but but it could have been fucking Royal Mail yeah. who goes to every flat. Yeah. So then who's fucking responsible for it? But don't come at me with a shitty email blaming me and I'll, I'll clean it. I'll fucking clean it. It's another thing I've got to do. Mm. It's another thing I've got to sort out. You know, just right at the studio. Okay. Overhead stand. One of the things is threaded. Right. Can I f- replace it with something else I've got? Yeah. Right. Now that's broken. So I've got to fucking buy a new stand. Another mic stand. That's just just yeah, things yeah, yeah. just start to gradually kind of wear and tear. And it's harder to afford to just easily fix them. You know? Yeah. And um, your car. My car. You you know, just these little issues just start to little. Mm. And they're nothing, you know, they don't have to be anything major, but they just be f- little annoying little fucking things. And I think just in general, and because of, the, you know, cost of living and that sort of thing, and just, you know, the divisional politics at the moment, everyone's just a little bit, maybe a little bit more amped up or yeah. a little bit more sensitive to things and it's just you just got to be careful but you've got to manage these mm. creaks you know and and th- those sort of things don't help does that make sense it does yeah yeah you know yeah just fi- everything feels like it's hard you know when you run a business or you, you self-employ you're a musician gigging and doing that it's, it's hard enough as it is but when it just becomes more expensive to live your life mm. It puts more pressure on you bringing that money in. Yeah. Maybe you've got to work harder, but the more you work, the more things get worn, the more things that need, but there's less money available to mm. be easy to remedy that sort of thing. Yeah. You know? And it's like the zip on my kick drum case is it's, yeah. it's now getting to the point. It's just annoying. It doesn't, I've lost the, the clips gone and the bits ripped, so it doesn't do all the way up. Yeah. You know? I need some new sticks. I need, that's the thing, Collision. I fucking need yeah. some new drumsticks. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, but like, oh, this stops working or this breaks or this. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, it just gets hard. It just feels like you're walking through mud mm. a bit more, mm. you know? Yeah. I had a similar thing because I'm just sort of planning ahead my year because obviously I'm far busier now than I've probably ever been. And yeah, I was, I was very conscious that I don't want to just get through the year as in like right let's just get to september do you know what i mean when gigs sort of wind down a bit i want to still enjoy it because at the moment i'm like right may is all good but june might be is june good in terms of work and the rotor and like gigs and everything else and uh yeah my thing is to try and that's sounding cheesy be in the present you know what i mean rather than be like right let's just get through summer and gigs and all that be like no no no, enjoy it like because it's uh because that is life you know what i mean Mm. um but thankfully it all seems to be going all right like but it's still like i have it where august bank holiday sunday i'm meant to be working and i need it off because i got a gig but everyone's taking that day off and i'm like you know it's just lingering there and i and after being self-employed you know I, if I wanted to not do something, I can move it. I can go to a student. I can't do a lesson that week. And they go, yeah, it's fine. But when you've got a job, it's a bit trickier because you rely on other people to be like, they have to do the shift or whatever. Yeah. And it's uh, that's my thing is going like, right, half wanting to be like, right, let's just get through to September. And then I'll have done all the gigs. But half wanting to be like, no, no, don't wish it away. Because that, otherwise <laughs> you're wishing away four months yeah it's kind of like the film click with adam sandler where he's uh, you ever watched that one uh where he's not, like not he can he, he got this remote control where he can fast forward through life mm. and so say he has a cold and he's like oh i wish i could just fast forward through this and he's like oh brilliant i've managed to fast forward two weeks and he, he doesn't have a cold anymore and he's like oh, i wish i could just fast forward to when i like get my promotion and then he fast forwards like five years. He's like, fuck, I've missed five years. And then he and then he does something else and it keeps fast. Forward. And then before he knows it, he's like an old man. And he's like, fuck, I missed it all. Do you know what I mean? So that's my thing at the moment, just being like, right, get it all planned well. well thankfully for you, that device doesn't exist. Yeah. 
So yeah, so you have to live it all. But um, Bernard's watch did the opposite, didn't it? What's that? Stop time, didn't it? Bernard's watch. Do you remember that? Nah, I haven't seen. Nah, I haven't CB. seen many films. Kids, kids TV show. I've, uh, no, it was a, it was a oh, was it? children's TV show when I was a kid. <laughs> he just had like a pocket watch and he pressed it and it stopped time and he could do whatever I'd he wanted. That. I'd love that. Yeah. I don't know what I'd do because everyone always goes to like you'd steal all the money or something but I don't know because does it stop everything else? Like can you what if you stop time and then you can't move anything? I don't know. But mm. yeah that's it really. Try yeah. not to wish it all away. No, that's, that's good and I think yeah, I'm trying to plan my designate days off more yeah. and, and and get a few fun things in the diary. And yeah, you're right. It's important to not just get through it. Yeah. But sometimes it's hard not to feel like that because it's creaking a bit yeah. and, and it, it things are going wrong. You're like, oh, I've just got to get through that yeah. gig. I've just got to get through that shift or I've just got to get this project done. Mm. I've just got to do that. But then if you're not actually, yeah. in And, and the thing is, it just won't stop. No. There is no end. No. You'll never have just done all your washing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. All washing's done. Yeah, forever. I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. You you just I literally keep going. I literally said that to Alfie the other night. We were doing laundry and I was like, it's mental, isn't it? It's like because I was like, Oh, there's a bit more we need to do in this other bag that I didn't see. And I was like, Isn't it funny? Like we just we just keep having to do this laundry until we die. Like that is it. <laughs> like it's till one of us till dies. one of us dies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I think that's it. There, there will never be no more jobs, as James Acaster said, until you die. You know, yeah. get to the end of each day. Just like, like done all my jobs. And I think I think you know a lot of people I know we're we're having to work harder and longer, mm. like to essentially keep up with being able to afford life. Yeah. And then that just eats away at yeah your fr- your free time to do fun things yeah. or social things, but then it gives you much less time to just do the shit that needs doing yeah. like cleaning and washing yeah. and you know th- so y- your time is just so much more stretched mm. and and you can get all your chores done and be like oh right now it's bedtime yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like what the fuck was that yeah. day what was the fucking point of that <laughs> you know but then the money don't go as fast and it's like there's no reward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no reward at the end. Um, so it's, yeah. And it's this, you know, it's happened to loads of people in all different sort of industries. Mm. But sometimes I feel like I do, I do all right. Yeah. I've got f- fucking no money. <laughs> like, yeah. where's it? Yeah. It's just going. Yeah. Like, you know, and, you, and that's why sometimes you have to go, fuck it. I just, what, yeah, that you can't take the money with you. Mm. So just, things will be all right, but it's just, it just feels hard. Yeah. Yeah, feels harder. I don't know whether there's an age thing as well. Mm. Like just getting older, it's like oh, it's just a bit. Yeah, it's tougher. Well, I've been not just that, but bring it back to music. A lot of drummers I've spoken to recently are all like, "I have way less gigs, you know, than I used to." And it's creaking. Yeah, it's creaking. The industry's creaking. Yeah. It's creaking because people just haven't got the money to book bands. Mm. You know, they're being more cautious. And I think a lot of the reason our gigs are late notice is because people are really delaying that financial mm. commitment and going, can we afford a band? Yeah. Do you know what? We can. Let's get one. Yeah. You know, and then that puts strain on us because people are, you know, with short notice, much less likely to be available. Mm. You know, trying to find a fucking singer for this coronation weekend is absolute fucking absolute nightmare. <laughs> but, and so we're, yeah, it's just um, fiddly. Yeah. Tricky. It is. Creaky. Yeah. Tough, tough. Yeah. It's tough out there. It is tough out there. Everyone wants their, everyone wants their piece of silver. Exactly. Or whatever. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway. Nice. That'll do us. <laughs> I think that will. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Any any other drummers out there? Have you been contacted by mm. Collision Drumsticks or by any other sort of... What's, what's the most bullshit <laughs> spam sort of... Yeah. <laughs> impersonal yeah. <laughs> messages have you received on uh, on the old Instagram or anything like that yeah do let us know and have you messed with them have you played yeah. with them you know has it ever worked <laughs> yeah have you ever bought something well, is, there's a symbol company called like Coal Zone or something that I always Soul Tone Soul Tone that I always see like every single day that video well, we chatted about them did we because they got in touch with me oh yeah yeah, yeah that was it yeah 
Yeah, and we talked about their whole bullshit endorsement yeah. thing. It's basically you just get a discount. Oh, yeah. Maybe it was them, they've got They've got about 5,000 endorsees. Yeah. It's just people who buy their symbols yeah. for probably trade price, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, yeah. Anyway. I unsubscribed from their mailing list, but I think I still get them. <laughs> but, yeah. I ended up just saying to them, nah, I'm, I'm all right, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, Instagram, Twitter, email. Yeah, thanks uh, to the correspondence once again, Nathan Wood. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's now you get on with... Uh, yeah, do. And who do you plant for? Do you go for the Evans, yeah. DB1s, or the Remo? Yeah, exactly. <sighs> Silent Skins, or whatever they're called. Um, yeah, I had a good time in Greece. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we'll be back next week for my birthday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 38, boy. Nice. Woo! Chasing 40, chasing it down. Mm, but I don't want to wish it away. No. That's the point. That's the point. Yeah. Right. Nice one, boys. Nice. I'll see you later, mate. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Drum and Drummer. You can find us on Instagram at Drum and Drummer Podcast. And you can send us an email to drumandrummerpod at gmail.com. Remember, just pick up the sticks and twat it. <laughs>